first thank the Ethical Society for giving us an opportunity to have such an important discussion this evening. Um, one thing that I think that everybody in this room can agree on is that businesses should not be allowed to put profits ahead of our safety. The one thing that we need to acknowledge before we move forward this evening is that Ameren is attempting, Ameren doesn't believe that uh, nuclear power is worth the risks. Uh, that is proven by the fact that they do not want their shareholders to pay for it, and they want ratepayers and taxpayers to, pair, to, to bear all the financial risks that, coming with, that comes with building new nuclear reactors. I've got a water bottle, so excuse me. Uh, so there are three myths that proponents of the nuclear industry always manage to fit into a single sentence, and that is that nuclear power is cheap, that it is clean, and that it is safe. Nuclear power is, in fact, none of these. Every time I go to this room, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, myth one, nuclear power is cheap. So, nuclear power was, was promised in the 50s as a, an electric, produ an electricity producer that is too cheap to meter. Uh, instead, uh, within two decades of it hitting the market, it was too expensive for Wall Street to pay for. Uh, 1973 was the last time that Wall Street financed a nuclear reactor that actually met completion. Others since then subsequently failed. The reasons for that is because construction costs were, were never on uh, the estimated budget. There were always cost overruns, there were always construction delays, and there were always cancellations. Half of the nuclear reactors that have ever been proposed in the history of the United States have been canceled, meaning they never produced electricity. Bankers lost billions of dollars, and Wall Street exited the nuclear industry. So what does that mean for Missouri? That means in 1975, the Public Service Commission, the entity that regulates monopoly utilities like Ameren, uh, their predecessor, Union Electric, uh, wanted to build a second nuclear reactor. And by the time they wanted to do this, Wall Street was getting out of the business, and the PSC said it's okay for Ameren to, or UE at the time, to charge ratepayers up front years before a nuclear reactor or any other power station would be producing electricity. Well, the wise voters of Missouri in 1976 in a statewide ballot initiative said no, that is fundamentally wrong. So the construction work in progress law that the Public Service Commission promulgated in 1975 was made illegal in 1976 by a vote of the people. Uh, that gave us our current consumer protection law known as the no CWIP, or no quip, which is what I'll be referring to it as the rest of the evening. In 1977, following this vote, Ameren suspended construction of their Callaway 2 plant without knowing how they were going to finance it. In 19, or, so that speeds us up to uh, 2009. Uh, so 2009, Ameren, wanted to build a second nuclear reactor. In order to do this, to save their shareholders, any risk of defaulting on this project, decided to try and have the state legislature repeal the no quit law that voters enacted in 1976. Uh, this failed. They came back in 2011 this year with a different legislative tactic, which was to undermine the no quit law, slowly erode it. So instead of completely repealing it and raising rates uh, 30 to 50 percent for a new nuclear reactor, they wanted to charge us just a little bit, just to get a foot in the door, because that's all it is. It's a foot in the door for a further repeal of the no good law. Uh, we said, no, why is Ameren going to be back in 2012? Well, the answer is simple. Uh, they don't want their shareholders to risk any of their money. They want taxpayers to do it in the form of billions of dollars in federal loan guarantees. And they want ratepayers to do it in what will be subsequently billions of dollars in uh, increased rates. So where is this happening around the country? It's happening in Georgia, it's happening in Florida, and it's happening in South Carolina. Each of these states are seeing rate hikes on the entire spectrum of utility customers, and there's not even a single nuclear reactor being built. In Georgia, the one that's the most, uh, the one that's furthest along, one could say, has already received, it's the only recipient of these federal loan guarantees in, in the order of $8.3 billion. Every single person in this room has a $27 stake in this 
two reactor project that's being built in Georgia that's actually not being built in Georgia because the Nuclear Regulatory Commission hasn't even authorized the license for the two AP-1000 models that Georgia wants to build. Uh, their rate payers are expected to pick up the extra $6 billion in increased rate hikes. And as you can see in Florida, the two, the two utilities in Florida that want to build nuclear reactors have estimated the same project as in Florida in the neighborhood between $18 and $22 billion. But lucky for Georgia's citizens and rate payers, uh, they'll, be, they'll be charged for the extra costs of a nuclear reactor uh, as the way the Public Service Commission there decided to allow uh, the, the utility, similar to Ameren, uh, to uh, recover rates. So the utility actually stands to profit on cost overruns. And that's actually, that's absolutely absurd. So the folks in Florida, they're paying right now for a nuclear reactor that's not being built. South Carolina, which got cut off, is, uh, those rate payers as well are being charged for reactors that are not being built. So who in here thinks that the French are great at building nuclear reactors? Show of hands, anybody? Yes, we got a couple. So in, in 2008, Ameren uh, decided to file a construction operating license with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Uh, by law, they had to declare what type of nuclear reactor they wanted to build. They didn't want to build the ones that Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina are proposed to build. They wanted to build the French company Arriva's uh, EPR design. Well, there are two places that this is actually under construction. The first one is in Finland, where it is four years behind schedule and is $4.2 billion over budget. There's no guarantee that those construction delays and cost overruns are not going to become more significant. Also in Flamanville, France, uh, the EPR is four years behind schedule as well, $3.2 billion over budget. And the French Nuclear Safety Authority, you can't see it because I cut it off, uh, just a couple weeks ago declared that there were uh, safety problems in the construction with the new reactor, which is not, which is just going to add to the cost overruns and construction delays. The gift that keeps on taking. That's what I like to call nuclear power. Uh, you know, we want to, the, the Ameren wants to charge us before a construction license is even obtained. They want to charge us during the construction of a nuclear reactor. They want to charge us for the power a nuclear reactor produces, and then we're going to have to pay for it after it's done producing power. So, uh, you know, the uh, cost, cost estimates for decommissioning a nuclear reactor between $600 million and $1 billion. There is no solution for the long life radioactive waste that is going to remain on site. And uh, the site's actually never going to be usable again because it is incredibly contaminated with radioactive waste. Uh, decommissioning example, San Onofre in California, 1966. It was built for $90 million. Uh, you uh, adjust the rate, the, the construction rate and inflation. Uh, $604 million by the time it was decommissioned. It cost more to decommission this nuclear reactor than it did to build it. So nuclear wastes. There's no long-term repository in this country for long-lived nuclear wastes. So at the same time, the Department of Energy is deciding the winners and losers in the nuclear industry and who's going to get federal loan guarantees. They're being sued by the same utilities because they don't have a solution for the waste. So it, it seems nonsensical and, and, and certainly without common sense to issue federal loan guarantees to utilities that are going to create more nuclear waste without having a place to deposit because those same utilities are going to sue you in the long run for not having a place to put it. Uh, over $1 billion has been given out in taxpayer dollars for not knowing what to do with nuclear waste. Aaron has sued, has since uh, withdrawn that lawsuit, and is in talks with the DOE about what to do with their waste. I believe 2019, you guys run out of the room. Um, One minute. So, myth number two nuclear is clean. Uh, you just have to look to Japan right now to realize that it's not clean. They can't eat their food, they can't drink their water, they can't live on their land. Uh, the nuclear process from beginning to end, uh, milling and mining, has completely devastated the Navajo lands in southwest Missouri. Uh, the, the way that you mine and, and mill uranium, first it's hazardous for workers' health that are mining radioactive ore. Second, when you mill it, you take these rocks that contain
obtain the uranium, you basically turn them into powder, throw acid on there, leach the uranium, and you're whole left with a whole host of byproducts that are still radioactive, contain heavy metals, and particulate matter. Uh, so the wind can pick up these dusts, spread them around land, and into the water, and so on. And nuclear power is safe. I bet that all of you recognize at least three of the names on here. It's time to wrap it up. I'm almost done. Okay. Uh, three Mile Island, Church Rock, Chernobyl, and Fukushima. Uh, nuclear power is inherently uh, not safe when things like this happen, but to stick with the Navajo and what happened in Church Rock, uh, a tailings dam burst. It flooded uh, 1,100 pound, 1,100 tons of radioactive mill waste onto Navajo land. It uh, flooded 90 million gallons of contaminated water. The, the river is still unusable today. Uh, just a couple pictures of uh, kids and folks after major nuclear accidents. And the one thing that we need to realize is this evening is. Why does Amherst want nuclear power? Why are they willing to risk our financial future to justify those? When they have undermined Prop C rules from 2008, if anybody was a voter here, we voters said that there should be 15% renewable energy mandate with a 1% rate increase gap. Uh, Amherst worked to undermine that, destroying, uh, I believe our quote was 10,000 green jobs all across the state of Missouri. Uh, they want to put a coal ash landfill in the floodplains, uh, flawed energy efficiency legislation, and want to undermine our current no equip uh, consumer protection law in order to pursue the most costly form of energy generation there is. <laughs>